Hello and welcome to Six Sigma TV.net. My name is Steve Finney and today I'm going to kick off the White Belt course, an introduction into what is Lean Six Sigma. Throughout this module, you'll understand what, what Lean Six Sigma is and what are the basic concepts that drive a Lean Six Sigma project. We'll also talk about the DMAIC methodology or the process or the approach that we follow to execute these Lean Six Sigma projects and what each of the different phases stands for and what you can expect from each of the phases as well. And, and Basically, this course is designed as an overview for all employees to understand what is Lean Six Sigma and how it impacts me or how, how I might be able to impact the organization by getting involved with Lean Six Sigma and applying the concepts to where I work. So this, is the, this slide shows you a traditional view of an organization. As you'll see this is a functional organization run by, by organizational charts and we have the different the, the corporate leadership and then we have the different functions that all are in a silo type of a organization. And what a process organization looks like is we show how the processes meander from end to end through each one of these different organizations or silos in the organization. So what the goal is is to apply these concepts to these end-to-end -end processes and break down the silos that impact the handoffs and the disconnects that go from one function to another. We want to have a seamless flow from one end to the other with all the organizations working together. So as we start doing these, these projects, you'll see these processes go end-to-end. -end. And what that means is that we're going to have people involved from each one of these different organizations so that each group is represented and each one understands what, how, what they do and how it impacts each of the other groups as we pass it off all the way on to our ultimate customer who receives the outputs of this process. Here's a brief slide overview of the DMAIC methodology. You'll see that DMAIC stands for Define, Measure, Analyze, Improve, Control. In the Define phase, what we're doing is trying to understand, you know, what is the project that we're doing? We'll set up our charter, understand who our stakeholders are, get our communication plan, understand what the process is, and then ultimately understand who the customers are of those processes and what their requirements are. All of this being in measurable form. Some sort of measurable terms is what we need to understand. What are our customers' requirements? What are the non-negotiables? What are the nice-to-have type of requirements, et cetera? But we've got to make sure we understand what our customer requires and what are the non-negotiables that this process has to deliver to our customers in order to exceed their expectations. In the measure phase, what we'll do is take those understanding of our customer requirements and start digging into our process to understand you know, what measures do we need to pull out of our process to understand how well our process delivers according to our customers' requirements. And we end up testing the, the information, we'll, we figure out which data we're going to pull from our, our process and it'll give us a good indication of how well that process performs. Then we go into the analyze phase where we'll take that data and start analyzing the process and understanding what is it, what are the root causes that are keeping us from achieving or exceeding our customer satisfaction or our customer's requirements. So we'll go through each a bunch of different tools. This is where we start getting into some statistical analysis. We do a lot of process map analysis, et cetera. But the ultimate goal of the analyze phase is to come out with an understanding or a listing of all the root causes that impact our process. Then we go into the improve phase where we'll take all those root causes and start brainstorming solutions to those root causes and try to figure out what, how can we improve this process and make it better. Then we go into the control phase where we take those improvements or that new improved process we put control plans in place so that we make sure we sustain any gains we make throughout the project. We don't want to make all these improvements and then have it go back to the way it was. So we put in control plans that help us monitor that process, help us keep those X's in control, and then understand which ones, as I'll talk about in a minute, which are the critical X's that we need to monitor to make sure that that process is functioning properly. So this function, Y is a function of X, is the core of Six Sigma. The Y's are the outputs and the X's are the inputs that feed into those outputs. And the outputs are what the customer receives. So it might be a new car, it could be an airplane, it could be a patient receiving some kind of a surgery. That's the output. And we can't improve the outputs. We can only rework the outputs. So what we want to do is look at the X's upstream and understand what are those X's that are the most critical in terms of impacting our, our, our Y's. And then we go through and, and funnel through all the X's. There's a whole bunch of them. We're going to figure out which ones are the critical X's or the vital X's. And we're going to focus on those vital X's so that we understand you know, where, where can we make the improvements, where do we have the most leverage on that Y, but we can control the X's and the Y's are going to come out perfectly every time. So Y is a function of X. That's kind of the core premise of Six Sigma. This slide shows you basically some of the costs associated with a poor process, poorly performing process. You'll see, we'll go into the Sigmas later on, but a Six Sigma process can save a company less than 10% of their sales in terms of cost and waste and rework. What that means, Six Sigma means, 
is that for every million products or surgeries or automobiles that we, we manufacture or process, only 3.4 out of those out of that million will be defective. That's what a six sigma process is. Then we go down to a four sigma process, which is approximately 6,200 defects per million opportunities. So as you see, the, the lower our process capability goes, the more defects we start incurring. So now let's talk about lean for a second. Lean is based, has its basis in the Toyota production system or TPS. The system focuses on delivering value to the customer. And what the big thing we focus on in lean is waste. Waste is an impediment to delivering this value that this customer desires. Every process is concerned with its impact on the downstream processes in the value stream. So what that means is that the work we do here, how's that gonna impact folks downstream from us? Are we doing the work here? Or are we creating problems for them downstream to make them rework stuff that we haven't been able to do right where we should have? Then we try to standardize work. So we have continue, you know, repeatable and reproducible processes where we're getting the same outputs over and over. Each of us are all delivering the same value and, and doing the work in the same standard format. Some of the press, uh, principles associated with lean we specify value in the eyes of the customer. So what does the customer, what does the customer deem valuable in our process? And as we go through and analyze our process flow charts and our process itself, we'll understand you know, which, which of these steps add value to the process in terms of be, as being defined by the customer and which are non-value added steps or which ones do we simply have to do in order to maintain business and comply with government and that sort of things. So those are the different kinds of uh, value classifications we'll look at as we go through a process map. What the, other, the other principle is we want to identify the value stream and eliminate waste. So value stream is basically the process flow. As I showed you in that earlier chart, the end-to-end -end flow, that's the value stream also. Those two terms can be used synonymously. Where is the waste in that process? We also want to put in place what we call a pull system, meaning that whatever the customer's demand is, that's what we're going to pull through the process versus just putting th stuff through and just shoving it out into the customer. What happens a lot of times we overproduce or overprocess information or products or services and it's more than what the customers require, so then we end up with waste and scrap and rework, et cetera. We involve and empower employees. That's a critical piece of the whole Lean Six Sigma in terms of success. We need to make sure we empower our employees because they're the ones that perform the work and they live in that process. They understand it better than anybody else, and they're the ones that have to suffer through a bad process if the process doesn't work. And one thing about that, just an aside real quick, one thing that we, we make sure everybody understands is that 85 to 95 percent of the problems within a pro an organization are due to the process and not the people. So we constantly have people stuck in a broken process and they keep getting bantered to just work harder. When in fact, you know, you can have the greatest person in the world, but if you stick them in a broken process, the broken process will beat them every time. So what we need to do is make sure our people know 85 to 95% of the problems are because of the process and it's not them that we're looking at. We're looking at the process for where the breakdowns are there. And then we want to continuously improve in the pursuit of perfection. That's the ultimate goal continuous improvement. So what is Lean Six Sigma? Basically that's an integration of the two most powerful tools from both Six Sigma and from a Lean Enterprise. We focus on the reduction or elimination of waste from the process. We look, focus on reducing or eliminating defects. We, under, we also focus on emphasizing what's the timely flow of the process. We want it to flow like a stream just naturally and, and without challenges and hiccups and hitting rocks and icebergs along the way. We also want to reduce variation. That's one of the keys of Six Sigma is the variation. Whenever we start having variation from the acceptable, the ideal optimal situation, we start creating waste and then we start creating defects. And that's the, the most critical element of variation is eliminate variation. Variation is bad. So then we're going to require people to, to do the work, not do the work to the people. They'll, they'll be the ones that make the improvements. And, if, and both the two concepts are tied together nicely in what we call the DMAIC roadmap, which we discussed earlier, the define, measure, analyze, improve, control. So why are they both needed? This slide shows you where we, if we were just focusing on defects from a Six Sigma perspective, you'll notice that we have a fairly large chunk of the bars two and four have defects. Now, if we just applied Six Sigma, all we would do was focus on the defects piece of it. But you'll also notice that in one, in step seven, we're overproducing in steps Two, once we fix the defects, three, five, we're going to be underproducing. So that's where the lean comes into play to help balance out the workload so we understand you know, where, where the line balancing so that we, we have the right amount of capacity and the right amount of work that goes through the process at the right time and everybody has an equal workload in the process so we don't overburden certain steps within the process and overproduce. So Lean Six Sigma is also a part of a robust set of tools. You see we have, on this slide it shows you where we have lean, 
which is eliminating waste, Six Sigma, which is focused on reducing variability. Then we have this thing called DFSS, which is called Design for Six Sigma. Anytime we have a process that doesn't exist, we'll go in and, and put together what we call the Design for Six Sigma, or Design for Lean Six Sigma, where we'll design this process, process with the end state being a Six Sigma process. Or the other instance we'll use that's Design for Six Sigma might be where we have a process that performs so poorly that we need to basically re-engineer the entire process and we'll come in and apply the Design for Six Sigma techniques at that point. So we will use continuous improvement lean and Six Sigma concepts for normally, normally already performing processes. We'll go and apply Design for Six Sigma as we start building new processes and we want to improve other ones beyond to a Six Sigma level. Who uses Six Sigma? So this slide shows you a few GE, General Electric, the meatball, that's where a lot of this started, even though Motorola gets credit for the ones that started Lean Six, or Six Sigma, and actually achieved Six Sigma. That they, um, they are the ones that started it, but GE's the one that made it popular. You also see Harrison Medical Center is one of the local companies around here. We have Ford Motor Company, they've been doing Lean Six Sigma for quite a while. Others include Swedish Medical Center, Virginia Mason, Children's Hospital, just about the city of Fort Wayne, Indiana, all kinds of organizations, any nonprofits, businesses, or government, any organization can benefit from applying the Lean Six Sigma principles. So that's, I hope that helps you for uh, understanding of what Lean Six Sigma is. It was designed just to be a basic introduction, but stay with us as we go through the additional modules and you'll get more information on what Lean Six Sigma is. Thank you, have a great day.